Welcome. Who is this webinar for and why? They are basically for equine professionals of all disciplines. Equine massage therapists, equine body workers, vet techs, barefoot trimmers, farriers, vets, trainers, and anyone who is involved in the day-to-day -day handling of horses. So why the professionals? Well, managing equine lymphatic congestion is not well understood, and the professionals are our subject matter expert about our horse's health, and they're able to reach more owners and raise awareness the fastest. But anyone who's interested in our series, regardless of whether you're a prof equine professional or an owner, or have just have a very strong interest, you're more than welcome to attend. So what am I going to learn today? We have 10 objectives. Number one, understand the role of flies in the environment. Two, identify flies' favorite food. Three, identify types of disease flies transmit. Four, understand the relationship between poor digestion and lymphatic congestion. Five, identify the lymph vessel highway system. Six, identify key locations of lymphatic congestion on your horse. Seven, identify what is in lymph fluid. Eight, take home helpful ways to minimize flies on your horse and property. Nine, heal solution to managing lymphatic congestion. And 10, enroll in HEALS online and in-class sessions. And flies play an important role in the environment. They are a food source for other animals, such as birds, fish, and reptiles. They pollinate plants, and our horse flies are hairy, and they carry more pollen than a honeybee. But one of the primary things they help do in the environment is clean up organic matter. Mother's Nature's Way of Cleaning House. Many years ago, I attended an agricultural conference and a gentleman by the name of Dr. Tom Dykstra, who is an entomologist, a person who studies in insects, was giving a lecture on flies. He said they have a simple brain and a simple digestive system. They use their antenna with hair-like structures to detect odors from long distances. Because they have a simple digestive system, they can only digest rotting organic matter. And what they really are are scavengers consuming rotting organic matter, including things like manure. Flies are attracted to rotten organic matter. This is Bella's leg. She is a Clydesdale that had chronic progressive lymphedema. And you can see the visible swollen leg and how compromised it is. And remember what Dr. Dreikster said, they are attracted and they're scavengers at cleaning out rotten organic matter. And the females will bite for blood for reproduction and they lay their eggs in this case, in Bella's leg, and thus created the maggots. If you see at the bottom of the picture, little things are on the ground, those are the maggots that we dug out of Bella's leg. And because they're attracted to a compromised leg, such as Bella's, this is a haven for them to lay their eggs and carry on their reproductive cycle. And keep in mind that their feet carry bacteria and they're able to transmit infections, 
pathogens, foreign invaders, including things such as parasites into the blood. Let's take a look how flies uh, and disease are related. Flies will regurgitate their stomach contents onto food. It could be your food if you're sitting outside it for an event. And their stomach acids can dissolve food matter and make it possible for them to suck it through their straw-like mouth. You shoot fly away and you consume some food which possibly could have fly stomach contents, bacteria from their feet, impossible fly poop. So somebody gets sick, maybe you, you come down with stomach cramps, diarrhea, and they have the possibility of transmitting disease. So be cautious when you're an outside event and just think about what you're really eating and the role of flies in the environment. You don't know where the fly has been and what it is transmitting. Let's take a look here. Equine infectious anemia is caused by horse and deer flies and it's fatal. It belongs to the family of HIV and is considered a retrovirus. The horse displays weight loss, anemia, depression, edema or swelling, and jaundice. There are 65 diseases associated with flies, including leprosy. So in the biblical times, it's, it makes perfect sense because all you go to the marketplace, you had all various animals and species there, and they're all defecating in that marketplace. And in the Middle East, it's very hot. So this is a haven for flies. Also TB, tuberculosis is a breathing disease. We were personally uh, impacted and my grandmother was helping somebody who had TB and ultimately she came down with it and succumbed to it prior to my mother's marriage. So we never really got to know my grandmother. Dysentery is an intestinal infection with diarrhea. Cholera is an infection in the small intestine and is often fatal and they're always worried about uh, places like Haiti, Bangladesh, places where there's a natural disaster and where uh, there's water contamination from the flies. So if you happen to be at an event and you're, you're comp or you, you may hear someone say, oh, the flies and mosquitoes are attracted to me all the time, you very well may have a congested lymphatic system because they are able to detect odors from a long distance. And if you've got a congested lymphatic system, that is exactly what they're, they are, are, are attracted to because it's really broken down organic matter. Poor digestion aids in lymphatic congestion. A lack of enzymes, probiotics, and micronutrients. If your horse is lacking in these areas, they are unable to fully digest the food that they consume. It also reduces feed efficiency. So if they're not digesting their food, the excess amount that's not digested properly and used goes into the internal waste removal system, which is the equine lymphatic system. Lymph vessels and the highway system. The equine lymphatic system has um, a, what I would like to consider roads. Let's break them down. You have lymph capillaries, which is your local roads. We have pre collectors, which is we would consider our county roads. They have collectors, which would I consider the state roads and the ducks and trucks. They're actually extra large and I would consider those the federal highway system. So to move the lymphatic system, 
you have all these various small roads, medium and large, to move this uh, waste. Equine limb system. Every horse is susceptible to swollen limbs. Drafts are known for equine chronic progressive lymphedema known as CPL. Let's take a picture of the equine lymphatic system here. This is the collectors, which would be equivalent to like your state roads. If you see the green arrow, those green arrows are the superficial lymphatic vessels directly under the skin. And if, when you take a look at this, any undigested food waste gets transferred from the lymphatic system via the liver and the small intestines and is to be removed from the body through urination. However, when you have swollen limbs like we saw in the previous photo of Bella, you will notice that most of the swelling that you see in horses is generally where the superficial lymphatic vessels are, where the green arrows are. So all you have to do is just look. Look where the flies are congregating, and that will tell you where the lymphatic congestion is. Equine leg is problematic. Let's take a look at the structure. We have superficial lymph vessels in the cannon, hock withers, as well as in the hoof, pastern, and fetlock. And if you take a look at the hoof, pastern, and fed, fetlock, it resembles an hourglass. So think of it this way. If you have an abscess in the hoof, you basically were thinking, I've got five, let's say, lymphatic vessels going into three. You're going to get congestion every time, just like you do on the highway when you go from a five lane highway into a three lane highway. The cars back up and you take your turn one at a time. So this is not unusual to see flies congregating at this area because it's highly congested because of the superficial vessels of the lower part of the equine leg. Why and where are flies most attracted to on a horse? Why? It's easy access to broken down organic matter due to the superficial vessels on the extremities. Where most common areas you're gonna see is the eyes because mucus is broken down organic matter. So if you see a lot of flies around their eyes with a lot of mucus, that's telling you you've got invisible, okay, lymphatic congestion. You may not see swelling, but it doesn't mean it's not there. You see it around the withers. You can see it in the front and the pastern, fatlock, cannon bone. In the rear, you'll see it in the pastern, that lock, cannon bone, and hock. And oftentimes, you'll see it in geldings with swollen sheets, simply because when they were gelded, a scar tissue was formed, which blocked. As we age, we lose lymphatic tissue. And there's a scar tissue there, and the lymphatics can't pass the scar tissue. Flies will tell you where the lymph the lymph is congested. I call this the invisible, which is now to me visible. If I'm looking at these two horses here, I see a congregation of flies up by the withers exactly where the superficial lymphatic vessels are. They're having a feast. It's easy access to food. It helps with their reproduction. So that is telling you these two horses have lymph Lymphatic congestion up, up by just past the withers there with a superficial lymphatic 
vessels are. So it goes from the invisible, because you can't see swelling there, but now that you know where the flies are, now you know where the congestion is. Destroyed and impaired vessels leads to congestion. Anywhere in that highway system that we spoke about, if they are destroyed or impaired, will lead to lymphatic congestion. You see the photo on the right where the skelding over here has a swollen leg. Uh, you could also look up, you see part of his sheath there is also swollen. So just keep in mind, so wherever the swelling is, you're going to know that I've got some impaired or destroyed lymphatic vessels here. And um, the objective here is now to reroute or detour the congestion to an area that is not congested. So the system that is healthy can take it on its way and remove it through the body, primarily through urination. So, what is lymph fluid? What's in it? It's toxic waste. It's got some water, blood cells such as red and white, has a lot of foreign invaders such as viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasites. It also has a lot of waste products and other foreign protein and substances. It includes fat, which is the intestinal lymph, cancer cells, dead cells, and toxins. Basically, it's broken down organic matter. And this is flies' favorite food source. Take home. Here are some helpful hints to minimize flies. One, keep a clean immaculate barn to discourage flies from setting up housekeeping. I know it sounds basic, but I can't tell you how many times I've been to a facility and the stalls are just filthy. Uh, wash a horse's leg when they come in from the field. We get lazy, many of us, and we just ignore it. The dirt and mud carry bacteria and they can cause infection. And remember, flies like to lay their eggs in it. We use a lot of diatomaceous earth on the horse, in our stalls, and on the manure piles. Why? Diatomaceous earth is a fossil flower, and it's ground up fossils, and it's a white powder, feels like chalk. So when flies come in contact or uh, the larva comes in contact, it prevents, it, well, it will first, it'll kill them, but it prevents the, the larva from developing into flies. It will also help keep down spiders in your stalls. We have received numerous reports of black widow and the recluse uh, spider causing lymphedema issues. Um, so I would definitely it's relatively inexpensive. You can Google it, just make sure you don't use the one for the pools. Uh, there is a food grade, diatomaceous earth, so check with your distributor. Uh, flies like uh, dislike the smell of cinnamon, lemongrass, and eucalyptus. This summer, I took a bottle of Four Thieves and I doused it with a rag and I put it on my screens and I wiped down the the frame of my doors to my mudroom and to the front house. And the flies won't. Actually, they, they're gone. They will not land on that screen because of the oil. So, real cheap fix. Uh, consider herbal supplements to address any kind of specific health issues, such as a leaky gut. Horse has a leaky gut most likely they're going to have a congested lymphatic system. Your horse has chronic progressive lymphedema. You certainly want to look at some herbal supplements that would help clean the blood. So what's heal solution for lymphatic congestion? Let's take a look at this. This was done 
last year when we were teaching an MLD class, a manual lymph drainage class in Wyoming. This was amazing. If you see on the right side, you'll see a congregation of flies. This is the same horse. And on the left side, that is where we did manual lymph drainage and you see just one. So become an equine manual lymph drainage practitioner today. So if I was looking at this horse, I would know exactly what sequence I would use, whether it's the head, the front, or the hind quarter. I would use the hind quarter one, so I would clear out all of that lymphatic congestion. So what does an equine manual lymph drainage practitioner really do? First of all, we teach owners on how to manage chronic conditions. In this photo here, you see Liberty, who has her head on my shoulder, has a problem with swelling in the jaw. And it's just not cost, it's cost prohibitive for a therapist to come there every single day. So as a therapist, we train the horse owner, in this case, Lou Ann, on how to do equine manual lymph drainage. When we did it, this poor horse drained for three days through her nose. She had a runny nose that was non-stop. The other thing we do is we serve. Let's say a horse has got some, uh, this is a picture of Sophie. We, she was just a horse that was there, but, you know, you know, for, uh, for us to work on. But here you would serve horses with acute conditions, such as maybe a tooth extraction. Uh, occurred and you want to drain that area. Uh, perhaps maybe the horse has sinuses or um, some, you know, clogged eye ducts. This would be considered an acute condition where you would be able to go out and use the head sequence and help clear that out. The other thing is you empower yourself, the business, and the equine community because you have skills that nobody else has. And that is how we raise awareness. And that is how we can educate each other on lymphatic congestion and how we can actually manage it. Sign up today for HEALS lymphatic courses. There are two. The first one is the introduction to connective tissue and the equine lymphatic system. Currently, it is a live webinar. One, it's an entry level. Anyone can sign up for this. It's just basic information. Number two, this course is a prerequisite to attend the two-day hands-on fundamentals of equine manual lymph drainage for professionals. So sign up today for the early bird special of $150 versus $195 of savings of $45 and it's three CEUs. You can go to www.healequine.com forward slash class schedule. And it will be on Zoom and the $150 offer is good until Wednesday, September 30th. The second course is the fundamentals of equine manual lymph drainage. Tuition is 450 and it's 16 CEUs. So you want to know what's in it for me as an equine manual lymph drainage practitioner. The answer, plenty. One, you acquire specialized skills and knowledge compared to your competition. Two, you can identify visible and invisible congestion and you know how to manage it. Three, you can easily integrate the strokes and the massage sequences into your current modality. And four, you may be able to perform equine manual lymph drainage when other modalities may be contraindicated, such as stall rest due to maybe perhaps a stifle injury. Chinese proverb, when someone shares something of value with you and you benefit from it, you have a moral obligation to share it with others. 
So please pass it on what you learned and where you learned it from. Sign up for Heal's newsletter, www.healequine.com. And thank you. And don't forget, believe in the possible.